Good afternoon, guys. Welcome to This Week in Reselling. I apologize, we're a couple minutes late. Uh, Lonnie, how you doing today, bud? Doing well. Thanks for not telling them it was my fault, because <laughs> it was. I think they probably could have just guessed that, though. Let's be honest. Uh, let's say hi to a few people in the chat. Tennessee Picker was first. Uh, Nevermore Antiques Rod at Win by Doing. Uh, who else is in the chat here? Katie Trader, Murphy the Esky, Lauren Hot Cheek Thrift. Thank you for joining us, guys. Yeah, thanks for joining. And sorry, I kind of got weird there for a second, but I forgot to hit mute on the uh, video. So even though I've done like 310 <laughs> videos now, I forgot to hit mute. But uh, hey, let's, it's all good. let's launch. Let's launch right into uh, my YouTube channel pick of the week. You, yep, do that? you, got, it. you got it up. If not, I do. Yeah, can you? Yeah, can yep. you pull it up? You're Got it ready to go. Sweet. I'm broadcasting from uh, the warehouse today, so odds are good that I'll get interrupted. I apologize. I couldn't couldn't do it from uh, home today. That's fine. I'll tell dirty jokes while you're gone if you have to leave. All right, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, Scott, the bearded picker, is our featured YouTube channel of the week. Um, right Lonnie and I both know Scott. We met him in Chicago. Yeah, Scott is a really good dude in spite of being from Alabama. We don't hold that <laughs> against him. <laughs> but um, actually, he does a really cool show um, that RBC Bearded. I'm not even sure. Reseller Breakfast that? Club. Resell okay, there you go. Reseller Breakfast Club. I actually got finally got a chance to check it out this morning live. And, uh, man, I was only there, I think, maybe 20 minutes. And it was, um, let's see, Scott, Steve, Alcorn, uh, Slick. What, what, what is his name? Slick Steve uh, Alcorn Flips, I think. Steve Alcorn. Okay, he used to be called something else, I think. Or Slick Flip or something? Jeez, I know. That's I, yeah, maybe. And then uh, also Jim. Uh, Jim and Tara, he, he was there too. So those three guys. And um, man, I actually learned, learned a few things just by watching about 20 minutes. So I highly recommend y'all check out Scott's channel. Yeah, and, uh, check out that morning show. It's pretty cool, man. Yes, yeah, Scott's a smart guy. And they, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, Scott, if you're in the chat, but I think they do that reseller breakfast club show on Tuesday and Thursday mornings at 8 a.m. Eastern. I yeah. think. Let's see, Stephen Stuff Resell Killers. Hey guys, uh, oh check your messages, guys. I got something ready for you. I'll talk about in a minute. And then um, they're talk. They're saying silk. And then Rod says Steve did change his name recently. Okay, okay. I thought he did. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, go check out go check out Scott the Bearded Picker. Man, he knows a ton, and he's actually doing a lot more eBay recently too. So even if you're an eBay seller, and maybe you said, well, Scott's an Amazon guy, Scott's doing a ton of eBay right now too. He's doing both, and uh, he's good at it. So go check what Scott out. does is totally unique. I mean, he travels the whole country doing uh retail arbitrage i mean it's incredible i i um he came through cincinnati like it's been a couple times now and we went out to lunch and he let me you know interview him a little bit and talk about what he does it was it was fun yeah so um you want to take it off a of screen share while yeah. while i was watching that show this morning john um man i'm gonna steal scott's right there in the chat i'm gonna steal what he's what he told me but I think it's like really awesome, but he told me about pirate ship. You ever heard about that before? Pirate shipping? Mm -mm. Uh, I'm probably saying it wrong. Let me go to the website and I'll screen share the website. And if you can remember, you won't, but if you can put a link to it later. And if Scott has some kind of referral code or something, that'd be awesome. I don't know if there is or not. Pirate shipping. But uh, yeah, let me, uh, let me screen share real quick. Cause Scott told me about that this morning and I'd heard about it before. But after he told, after he started talking about it a little bit, I was like, okay, screw it. I got to try this out. And here it is. Here's the website, pirateship.com. And um, the thing that Scott said that made me want to actually sign up is he mentioned, you know, instead of having your shipping coming straight out of your PayPal account, you can have your shipping get paid to pirate ship by using your PayPal debit card instead, which you get cash back on. Oh, that's cool. So that's smart. Really smart. Um, yeah. It's a percent or two. It's not a ton, but I yeah, spend a lot on. Up. Yeah. I mean, you figure how much you're going to spend on shipping. 
I spent about a thousand dollars on shipping last month. I looked. That's, that's ten bucks right there, man. So if it's one percent, yeah. So that that's that's really killer. And not only that, let me uh, stop screen sharing. Uh, oh crap! I didn't stop, did I? Yeah, you uh, did. Okay. So uh, not only that, but if you're if you're not a top rated seller, you get the um, commercial. I think. Scott called it commercial plus pricing for your shipping um, by using pirate ship. You get like the extra discount, even if you're not a top rated seller, it doesn't matter. And you, you connect your eBay account. You have to log in and give them like the API access to the eBay mm -hmm. account. And then it automatically pulls all of your stuff that needs to go out into pirate ship. You ship from there and then it sends the tracking and stuff back to eBay. No, so kidding. it's like, yeah, so there's That's it's nice. seamless. It's good. So, huh. And um, not only that, one more thing, and I'll, I'll shut up for a second. Um, you all, they also do cubic uh, shipping there. So like certain sizes and weights, uh, you can be charged cubic shipping instead of standard by weight shipping. If it's, I think if it's small and a little heavy. I actually did one package today that went cubic rate and it's still priority. And I saved a dollar and thirty cents on that shipment. Wow, buck thirty on one shipment. If that happens, say five times a week, plus you you do the cash back thing, man, that adds up. So mm -hmm. go check it out. Do they only uh, ship USPS, or can you do FedEx and UPS? That's a good question. And that's one I do not know. Um, their website says get the cheapest shipping rates for all USPS services. They don't mention any other shipping. So, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, Steven Steph's asking, so do they have the regional too? And Scott, the bearded picker is saying uh, USPS. So, uh, I didn't try and do a regional rate. That's a good question too. I haven't tried regional A or B yet. I've got something in that same vein. Um, let me pull this up. I found this article. But I do want to thank Scott for bringing that to my attention. Uh, he's going to save me a bunch of money. So I guess I owe him a beer the next time I see him. <laughs> this guy knows his stuff, man. He's a smart guy. All right. Uh, so this is Pitney Bowes. Uh, speaking of shipping, they renewed their partnership with eBay. This is where you just came out yesterday. Extending its multi-year collaboration, Pitney Bowes has announced a renewal of its partnership with eBay. Uh, it's been in place since 2012. Da-da-da-da-da. Mm, basically... Oh, these are the those are the guys that screw up our global shipping shipments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. And you all, I always see them. They're always on that sticker, too, when you print your label. It's Pitney Bowes at the top. Oh, yeah, that is, huh? That's right. Unless you use pirate, pirate, pirate ship. Pirate ship. <laughs> you have to talk like that if you use pirate ship? No, but they do on their uh, – all the little forms and stuff like that. They have, like, little pirate uh, vernacular yeah. stuff on them. It's silly, but it's cool. It's fine. It, it's kind of like sticking it to the man a little bit, too. I kind of like that part. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like if e if eBay is getting some kind of kickback from USPS, well, they ain't getting it from me anymore. Yep. <laughs> so I like that. Uh, let's see. Scott's saying, have it tried regional. It tells you what it thinks is cheapest. That's a good question, though. I need to figure out regional because if there's no way Pirate Ship would know that, you would have to select that manually, uh, I would think, because they wouldn't know if it fits in a regional box or if you even have them on hand. So, um, yeah. Um, so, oh, I'm going to go right into, do you have a link to your website below, John? And why don't you tell everybody about your uh, business real quick? Follow yeah, I do. Uh, so also in the description of this video is a link to Scott's channel. I forgot to mention that. Scott the Bearded Picker. So if you want to find it quick and easy, it is in the description of this video. Um, and I also have a link to my website, Look What I Found, dot bid. You kind of see it right up there behind my bobbleheads. Um, and we're just getting in so much stuff, man. Now that the weather's warmed up, people are coming in hordes, like bringing in truckloads of stuff. And a lot of really cool stuff, too. Um, I did a live stream Tuesday, just kind of impromptu, showing off some of the different crazy stuff that's been coming in. 
Yeah. And uh, one thing that I like to do, I always check out the national auctions because I think like John gets a ton of like small electronics in and video games and stuff like that. And he'll lot it up. It's not like you're buying one at a time. He, he will lot it up. I just got a big box of stuff. Um, I don't know, last week. Was and a huge, box. A huge box. <laughs> yes. It was a big box. Yeah. I bought man. I, and I don't even remember all the numbers, but I bought like two big lots of CD players, like portable CD players. I bought remote controls, calculators. Um, I bought, I bought cameras. I bought all kinds of stuff. There's all kinds of junk in that box. Right. So I tested it all out or most of it, a lot of it. And John, I had like about a 90% success rate on the test. Did testing. you really? Wow. Yeah. That's good. I had like a couple of units that didn't work, but most everything worked. Um, so I thought I would share a few things that came because man, I got some great prices. Okay. Um, I think I spent, I think these lots were like, 12 to 15 dollars a piece for these like calculator and like cd lots and stuff like that this is the big one though right here that i got this is a sony handycam model dcr hc 36 it's a uh, mini dv and i already ordered a charger for it and if this thing works which it looks like it's in pretty good shape and I have real good success with these working. If it works, then this is a hundred dollars. Seriously. Yep. Wow. That's great, man. And Tennessee Picker see. says that you won the stuff he was bidding on. Oh, so he was bidding against me. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I, we must be really good friends for me to even talk about your auction on here because I'm killing my own, you know, I'm biting off my own. Hands, <laughs> right. but, uh, it's fine. Look, this little uh this little, this nice little Panasonic micro cassette recorder works perfect. It even had a cassette in it, so I could test it real easy. Nice. I just threw batteries in it, worked fine. Uh, Those things sell for good money. There's a lot of different brands like Olympus and uh, mm -hmm. I know Sony's do pretty good. Yeah, Panasonic is pretty good too. Uh, Panasonic is you know just behind Sony there. And speaking of Sony, I got a bunch of these Sony portable CD players. These are all tested. There are this stuff is already listed on eBay right now. Um, those work. This is the best one though. The sports model. Check that out. Look how rugged. Look, it's got this clamp thing. Like you pull pull this back, and it opens up. It is sweet, man. Yeah, those sports models, even the ones with like the ones you put on your arm, those can. I've seen those bring pretty good money. Yeah. And then I got a bunch of remote controls. Here's like three of them. I'll show you. This is like a Pioneer stereo type remote. This one's probably going to get me about 25. This is actually a little remote control for a quartz infrared zone heater. Several hmm. of these have sold for $15 plus Seriously? shipping. Wow. Yep. And then this is a universal remote control R50. And it's tested and works. And this is uh this is one of those learning remote controls where you can program macros into it. That's cool. Like where you hit one button and then it goes through the whole startup sequence that you yeah. program. And uh, I should get about thirty bucks for this. So there's some good stuff there, man. Go go check it out, guys. Go check out. Uh, look what I found and bid against me. I welcome the competition. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got a little mini haul too. I'll show. Um, I went to some yard sales today and found this box of like game stuff in this guy's garage i didn't even look at it all i i just saw from like a little bit on the top and he said he wanted 20 bucks so i just went ahead and did it so yeah, i'm gonna fat. show you guys i haven't that... i haven't opened this up yet it's ps2 fat i will show i'll pull it all out and wait 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 you, you, you haven't looked through here yet no i haven't looked through any of this yet oh this is like when uh wait, you're you're too young gerardo gerardo what, what's his name gerardo uh, Rivera, Gerardo Rivera? Yeah. Talking about the Al Capone reveal thing? Yeah, I hope it's yeah. better than that. I hope so, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, PS2 Fat. It's nothing okay. connected to it besides some memory cards. But I've got, you know, some... Geraldo, my bad. Things. <laughs> I've got the cords and stuff, if need be. Uh, I got a Sega controller. Okay. 
I've got what appears to be an NES joystick. Oh, that's interesting. I've never yeah. seen one like that. I haven't either. I almost thought it was computer at first, but it's definitely got the NES plug. Fortunately, it's kind of like taped. It's kind of neat. It's like a third-party company, though. It's not Nintendo. This is just a signal booster. It's probably garbage. Um, I did see these games. Unfortunately, they're all sports. Oh, you already looked through them? I, I, I kind of glanced. I thought, saw they were all sports. So, you know, NFL, your NBA Jam, more NBA. Gretzky's 3D Hockey. I remember that being a pretty fun game. No, oh, they're all fun. They're just not worth anything. Oh, sports are right. <laughs> um, let's see here. There's a that, lot of stuff in here. I call that either shovelware or bundleware because yeah. I'll bundle that with a console. Yep. All right. This is an Xbox 360, like AV cord. Uh, Xbox 360 headphones. Another pair of Xbox 360 headphones. Uh, let's see. Sega Genesis controller. I got two of those. There's a PS2 DVD remote. It's missing the back, though. You can probably chunk that. <laughs> yeah. Um, PSP battery pack. Hang on to that, dude. I get I find PSPs all the time that don't have yeah. batteries. Um, this is just some kind of generic AV cord. This is a weird direct plug-in class two transformer. Look at that. It's got like a headphone plug almost. That's weird. Hmm. Um I've got a lot of Atari stuff down in here. Is that, an, is that an Atari? Let me connector? see that. Yeah, it is. It, All right. So, yeah. It'll got, fit uh, Sega. Too. Well, you know, Sega, Atari, and I think a, another system or two will all have that same connection. Okay. And then here's like the Atari. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a coax cable. There's all kinds of crap in here, man. I think I've already pulled out stuff for like seven different consoles. Yeah, um, formerly yours says, I bet that was an Atari power cord. Oh, really? Hmm. Okay. I'll have to look that up. These are just like some generic power cords. This one might fit the place. No, I don't think it's going to fit. No, no, that's generic. Let me see the end. Sometimes they'll have like one one side will be squared off and the other side yeah, won't. This one's, not, this one's not squared off, so I don't think it's going to fit. Oh, you know what you can do, huh? I've got I've got extra PlayStation ones laying around now. What can you do? Take a knife. <laughs> Seriously? Do you do that? Hell yeah, I do. Um, Take a knife to the lever. Random A V cable. More, you know, Atari stuff. This one's kind of broken. Um, this is Oh. Liberty City. I think this is like Grand Theft Auto map. Yep. All those games come with maps. Yeah. Um, Qualcomm AC adapter. This thing is beat, man. Looks like it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's just junk. I yeah, I would toss anything. that. Um, looks like a knockoff NES controller. Yep. Third party. Uh, more Atari stuff. Uh, PS1 controller. Got like a button or something going on there. Uh, a couple memory cards. Uh, PS1. Oh, how'd you fit a PS1 down there? <laughs> no game. Dude, it's a big box, I'm telling you. Uh, and there are some manuals. Oh, that's cool. A Sega manual. Oh, wait a second. Is this a Sega CD manual? Huh. No, it's just a generic Sega. Okay. So it's right. like all the oh, it's a catalog Sega stuff. Yeah. It's kind of neat. Um, Jungle Strike manual and Primal Rage manual. And one more thing. 
little Game Boy booklet thing. So twenty bucks. Did I pay too much, guys? Let me know. Well, hell, hell no, you didn't. You'll get that just for the uh, PlayStation Two, and the rest is free. Yeah, I so. know. I've got extra PS Two uh, cords and like uh, audio video stuff. I don't think I have any extra controllers, but yeah, I can group all that stuff together. You know, uh, you know uh, that makes me think makes that. Me think that Am I getting feedback here? Am I echoing? I don't hear an echo. Let us know in the uh, chat if you hear an echo. I might get a little closer to my mic and talk a little lower. But um, that you know that reminds me that one thing that I want to do in this shack out here is I want to organize. Is your video game like extra cords and power supplies, controllers, and all that stuff? Do you have that organized? How do you have that? Sort of, kind of. Um... I just have like one of those like four or five tier pull out plastic drawer things. Um, and I just, you know, throw a bunch of stuff in each drawer for like, you know, PlayStation, Nintendo, Xbox, so on and so forth. Okay, cool. Oh, so um, behind me, can you see this? Oh, yeah. Oh, the TV shut off. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll turn it on in a sec. But behind me, I actually made a cable today for Steve and Steph. This is a uh, TI-994A right here. They picked one up, and I made a cable, and I filmed a video for my other channel. So That's cool, man. Pretty That's excited, really cool. man. I'm trying to, uh, before I started Garage Flips, I had another channel, and I've kind of let it go since I've been doing the Garage Flips videos. And today I'm going to finally upload uh, a new video there. And I'm going to send a cable out to Steve and Steph. Oh, this is something else I got from your auction. This is cool. You remember that microphone you sent? Yep. Did you know it was actually two pieces? I don't think I did. Okay, so this is the base. And this is made by the company Sure. And it, this is worth about 30 bucks. It's got an XLR connection. This screws into it. This is made by the company Audio Technica. And this is worth about 30 bucks also. So nice. I have I'm able to piece out both. That's sixty dollars worth of stuff right there in that one microphone. That's cool. Yeah. Pretty awesome. So, so I teased this video um, with an offer up story. And Steven Stepper in the chat, so I can share, go and share this because I want to hear their input. John, you're breaking up. Uh oh. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? You're staticky. Uh oh. Any better? Can you hear me? Yeah, sounds good. Okay. I don't have my uh, headset with me, so I'm just using my laptop microphone. All right, so this is headlined Offer Up and went head to head with Craigslist to build a following. Now it's going after eBay to build a business. Um, where is it to the, uh, the startup is now adding a shipping option to its app that it believes will broaden the catalog of goods available to buyers and in a potential big change, attract a new set of sellers that are businesses rather than individuals. The company promised that with shipping offer ups core local buying and selling experience does not change, but gives the gives users the opportunity to discover more value and make their best deals. Um, let's see if potential buyers click on the ship to me option prominently displayed at the top of the app above the stream of the product photos that depicts the items for sale. So I'm curious, Stephen, Steph, um, have you guys heard about this yet? Have you, they have look in the chat, uh, offer up is going to kill it. 7.9% take. I think it was. So hopefully, uh, St I'm sure Stephen Steph will probably talk about this when they go live at some yeah. point. That's uh, I wonder what it's going to do to that platform. It could only help it, I guess. Yeah, I would think they would have to build it. What's going to be hard for them, I think, is to build uh, uh, buyer, uh, not buyer lawyer loyalty, but uh, confidence. Thank you. Jeez, man. <laughs> what, John, buyer confidence. Cause, I mean, eBay still struggles with that. Yeah, but buyer confidence is built in if they use. I wonder who, what payment processor. Are they going to use a payment processor? 
That's yeah. The key. There's a lot of questions with this. That's the key because PayPal has buyer protections built in. Uh, so that that's the question, right? That to me, that's brilliant. If this is their, if, if this was their monetization plan from the start, they have been brilliant with it because they offer their services for free up till now and spent all that money advertising. Um, and then now they're going to cash in after they built a huge user base. That's how you do it, right? Yep. Uh, Steven Suffer saying it's a debit card right now. Oh, they man, they might have. They might have some shenanigans there, man. That's the tough part. Michelle, I mean, Lee, how, how do they handle returns? You know? Yeah, I, there's. I don't know, man. I they're tr it sounds like they're trying not to use a um, a payment processor, but I think I think they should. There's value in that, unless they're going to. Maybe they're going to hold the money in uh, escrow and not release it until the customer signs off on it. it Mercari or something does something like that. Okay. Maybe. I'm, I'm guessing. I don't know. I have no clue. So. We're on par for the course. This show typically has more questions than answers. Uh, Rod, it went by doing, let me read this. I always like Rod's comments. Rod is a, a contrarian sometimes, so let's see what he's saying. I love it when I hear people say, I'm going to switch to local Etsy posh when eBay news comes down. Those apps do well, but not are not close to the audience of eBay. Me and Rod are on the same page. Rod and I both love eBay. I love eBay. I would get an eBay tattoo right now, man. I really would. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I agree with him. I agree with Rod about a lot of stuff, except not his, um, his love for the free returns. I don't, I'm not loving that, but <laughs> he has some good points to make for it though. All right, man, what you got? Oh, Steven stuff say it, it's escrow like Poshmark. Okay. Yeah, I'd say if you guys want to know more about the off-road shipping, definitely tune into Steven's stuff. <laughs> Tennessee Picker says, I'm loyal to eBay. I am I love eBay, but I don't know if I'm loyal to them because you know what? As much as I like eBay, I love eBay. As much as I do, they're not loyal to me. Like, I could screw up something tomorrow, and even though I've got, like, over 8,000 items I've sold there, one item they would just put me under. They they would they would like shut my account down over one item after such a you know what I mean? It's like it's a scary proposition. So mm -hmm. uh, you want to talk about this Route 70 sale or yeah. Um so we've talked about it before. Uh the highway 70 sale in Tennessee uh that goes from Memphis to Nashville, I think. Um, oh, by the way, the nine pound hammer just sent a super chat. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. He says, do you guys ever hit a wall? I haven't sold anything in a week. 231 items listed. Um, yeah, I've, I've definitely hit walls before and, you know, I try to maybe take a day off and then just get right back in it. I would ask, did you I, like, how, how often did you list them? I think he's saying hit a sales wall. Sales wall. And okay. You know, I mean, like, okay, so honestly, I'll be, I'll be honest here. If you have 231 items listed and you haven't sold anything for a week, there's something seriously wrong with what you're doing. You should have sold something within that week with 231 items. So either your items aren't desirable enough, your prices are too high. I would say one of those two things, really. I don't think you have the right items, to be honest, without knowing any other detail, without knowing any details at all. Uh, your items probably aren't the right items. Just, I guess. I, yeah, I think that's, I think that's a fair judgment. I'll give you a comparison real quick. I have 150 active items right now. And that's lately, that's been, you know, roughly what I have. Um, and I sell on average about 35 to 40 items a week. Um, so I, I mean, I would think you would want at least what 10% of your store to sell every week. 
I, I, man, I hear like 1% a day. Uh, it's going to be different depending on what you're selling. Like the clothing yeah. sellers, they have to have a lot bigger stores because the sell through is slower. A video yeah. game seller could probably run on about a hundred items. Right. You know, right. It, and then somebody like me, I've got some long tail, some quick flip stuff. I'm going to be yeah. somewhere in between, but I mean, I turn, I normally keep 600 to 700 items in my store and I'm turning about 200 to 250 items a month. So I'm, I'm moving a, somewhere around half of my store is getting turned over every month. Yeah. So, um, so nine pound hammer is saying that he has everything from video games to designer clothes. It's that's weird. Maybe we're on a sale, you know, um, or do the eBay promoted listings and see if that, if that helps some, but yeah, something, there's something not right there. There's, if there's got something wrong. Yeah. There's something seriously wrong, man. It, it, either items, prices, I would say photos, but honestly, man, like if you're selling video games, photos don't matter. Yeah. You know? I see people taking pictures of stuff like on their bed, like with their dirty sheets and it's yeah. selling. Like when I'm looking at the solds, like it still sells. I would invite you, like if you really want honest critique and feedback, uh, join our Facebook group and make a post. Say, hey, in your critique, drop it in. If you're, if you're brave enough, I, I know that's a big step. <laughs> Yeah. I wouldn't. I personally don't know if I would do that because I don't want to get torn down. But yeah, Mo yeah. most everybody in our Facebook group is going to build you up. They're not just going to pick you apart. Um, and the link to the group is in the description of the video. And uh, let's see. Nine Pound Hammer says, I'm beginning to think eBay is making algorithms like Facebook and my items aren't getting views. And, you know, that may or may not be the case, but I'm going to be uh, brutally honest again. Uh, if you start focusing on things like eBay's algorithm, then now you're now you're giving energy and time and thought towards something you can't control. You need to be focusing on those things within your control, in my opinion. And there may be something going on. I've had some weird stuff happen before, too. I try not to think about it too much. And I try to focus on listing, getting good items and, you know, taking good photos, pricing things right, because those are that's within the realm of my control. If you focus on things outside of your control, it can drive you nuts. I've been there. Yeah, so I that's get good it. advice. Um, so we were talking about the Highway 70 sale. Uh, so you, I, I mentioned a little bit about it. You want to talk about it some? Yeah, so there's a 200-mile uh, garage sale, supposedly 200 miles, uh, from Memphis to Nashville. And it goes from June, is it June 7th to 9th? Are those the dates? Uh, yes. And um, we are, John, are you 100%? 100%. I'm going. Okay. John's going. I'm going. We're actually going to hit this trail together, I think. Is that the plan? Yep. Somebody should probably notify Jackson, Tennessee, because <laughs> we're about to tear that town apart. Yes, it's going to be awesome, man. I'm, I'm very excited. So, Candace and I, are you going solo, John? I'm going solo. Okay. Are you driving the uh, CP Look What I Found van? <laughs> yep, I'm driving the Look What I Found van. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, we're going to meet up um, on, like, the northern end of the sale or more towards the northern end of the sale, and we're going to work our way down to Jackson, because we've heard, well, Candace did some research and found out that Jackson is like the center of activity and it kind of emanates north from Jackson and it's not as strong on either end on the Memphis or the Nashville side. So we've kind of worked out a route and um, we definitely like, if any of you guys are going to, um, if any of you guys are going to be like checking out the sales along that route, uh, we definitely be interested in meeting up on what Friday and Saturday night, John. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, don't have any plans, solid plans yet. Other than we know the dates, we know approximately where we're going to be. Uh, we'll try to post some information in the, um, uh, in the, uh, this week in reselling Facebook group. And yeah, we'll get together for drinks and, uh, you know, dinner and drinks or whatever and, uh, hang out. 
and maybe we'll see you out there on the trail too. So, yep, it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Adam has a question asking if we have an affiliate link for the LED lights that we are using. Is there a way I can mount them to a nice table without damaging it? Um, no, I don't have an affiliate link. I don't think Lonnie does either. Do you? I don't have an affiliate link for that. Um, I don't do like for the most part, man, like I, I'm, I don't like doing like affiliate links because then it seems like it's kind of tainting. I don't know. I'm not going to judge that, but uh, no, I'm not doing affiliate links, but I do have a link to lights on my channel. I think I have it on my Instagram too. Uh, and is there a way I can mount them to a nice table without it damaging it? It has clamps. Uh, They're kind of padded a little bit. At least there's like a rubber piece, I think. Um, but it depends on how thick your table is. Like if it's a pretty thick one, I don't think it'll go around it. You know what I think I would do though, is I would cut out some like, rubber or foam to put in between the two just to be sure if you're yeah. worried about it uh yeah john did you try the lights out yet yeah they're working out good um we only got two of them but so far you know it seems to be plenty plenty of light is it soft enough i think so I'm, until i like really see the pictures i won't know because it's definitely different. I mean, they're super bright, um, but the light's not quite as soft as you would get with a soft box or an umbrella or whatever. So it, it's right. a little different. But uh, you said your photographer liked not having those huge ass umbrellas, right? Yeah, yeah. Because we had like three of them all around his feet, and I think it was just a big mess. Yeah. Hey, I want to share something real quick. Okay. I see uh, Stephen Stafford in the chat uh, asking where all the St. Louis Cardinals fans are. Um, this is a video that Kevin, the Tennessee picker, posted. I think it was last night, maybe, or today. Um, pretty good stuff. He found a bunch of loose Legos and took them in and made like a bunch of money and then turned that into like some GameCube games. It was a nice little parlay. And doesn't he look great in his Cincinnati Reds hat? Oh, is that why you sent me the link? I didn't get to watch the whole video. I only watched <laughs> the first part. That was the point, right? It was the Cincinnati. Yeah. Do, you, do you see my screen? Yeah. Yeah, he he talks about um, <laughs> you know, me, me rigging the, the league and all this. Look at this. He's got notes. That's exactly what I'm saying. Oh, Kevin, you're hilarious, man. So, Stephen Steph, that's your future right there. I guess I'm going to have to get a new hat for Steph. She says she doesn't want to wear any of them with all my sweat stains and stuff in them. I want to congratulate Swamp Picker in the chat. Uh, he said he sold the LSU gumbo, which is a yearbook, the LSU yearbook for $0. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> no, he did, a, <laughs> did an accidental shift. Uh, it looks like he shifted to 6 so maybe it's $60. Seriously? That's what it says. Glenn, can you confirm? that you sold the yearbook for 60 bucks that sounds about right you know what yearbook it was we've talked about them before uh where you want to know if there's somebody famous in it it was pete maravich's uh senior oh year. that's killer man that's a great book right there yeah we, we've got a couple of books that's probably one of the better ones from lsu and um uh, and scott the bearded picker is going to say something stupid if he's still watching i know <laughs> 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 right after we plug his channel. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, he's going to do a, his RTR thing that he likes to do. You know. But yeah, that, that's cool, man. And then the other book that does well from LSU fairly well, Billy Cannon. Uh, you ever heard of him? Mm -mm. Is he a football player? Yeah. Yeah, he won the Heisman and played in the NFL and all that stuff. So, but, oh, look, David. That, name? that sounds like a name from like some kind of TV show. Billy Cannon. Like He's got a cannon well, for a arm. He's kind of our Pete Rose, really. Okay. Because he, after that, he became a dentist, and uh, then he learned how to how to print uh, money. Oh God! <laughs> he went, yeah, he went he went to jail for counterfeiting money and stuff. Oh, but he's still a legend around here. So, yeah, learn learn your uh, especially like most of the college yearbooks we're going to find here are going to be LSU, wherever your area is. You don't have to learn all the college yearbooks in the country. Learn the ones in your area. Learn what year, what the key yep. years are in your area, 
And if you don't want to buy them all, you can focus on just those. And you can Google a school. So when you go to like the Wikipedia, it'll almost always have notable alum and it'll tell you, you know, who the notable alum is. And it doesn't always say what year they went to the school, but it, it'll usually tell you when they were born. So it'll give you kind of like a jumping off point. I just found a Xavier University, two yearbooks from Xavier University in Cincinnati for 1950, 1951. And they both have Jim Bunning in them. He was a Hall of Fame baseball player. He died last year. I'm sorry. I'm reading about affiliate links. <laughs> With, from Jory? Yeah. <laughs> I guess I might have to. Uh, I guess I might have to add those. I just hate to. I hate to put affiliate links for something, especially these lights, because I'm a little nervous. Because if these lights break or they don't, they don't work out, then at least I can say, "Hey, I didn't make anything off of it." Easy, <laughs> right. easy. Yeah, you know, you're not putting your Lonnie stamp of approval on them. Well, I, I am, but I'm not making any money off of it because then you know. Hey, Lon I bought those lights. Lonnie made money off of them, and now they're look. They all three busted on me, and I'm like, ah, oh, I feel horrible. So I don't know. I don't know. We can only do so much. You got anything else, man? Um, let's see. Oh. Um. Hmm. Not really. I mean, I did want to talk a little bit about. Um, this is something that John never more antiques that's the right name right mm -hmm. john johnson from never more antiques also a youtube channel uh he talked about this i think a couple of months ago about having a second store or not a second store necessarily but a second ebay account um a lot of times i come across like light stuff that i think i can ship with just first class like a first class stamp or two mm-hmm and then I can, you know, be like really competitive with the pricing on eBay. And it could be a lot of different stuff. Small cables, photographs, postcards, uh, all kind of little stuff like that that you might want to sell. If, if you could just put that in an envelope, put a stamp on it, you can really be competitive and maybe even offer free shipping. Mm -hmm. But if you do that on your main account, you're not going to have tracking for those packages. And it can knock you out of a uh, top rated seller. Right. So I'm about to start a second eBay account for stuff like that. Uh, that's small. And do you have anything like that, John? Do you only have the one account? I only have the one account. Um, it, it'd be pretty rare that I would have something that I could send in an envelope, I think. It did be such a small percentage. And I just don't do that much on eBay. Like I said before, I've only got. Right now, 150 active listings. So I'm not doing it on the same level, you know, you guys are because so much of it just goes on my website. Well, another thing I thought about too is that since I only have the one account, like let's say I came into, uh, let's say I went to a yard sale and somebody said, hey man, you want these Playboys, Playboy magazines? And I'd be like, eh, I guess so. Because if you could sell like complete years, like 12 ish, you can get a little money. It's not going to be a lot. But you can you can make a little profit, but I would be hesitant to sell those on my main store. Mm -hmm. I've got Bibles in there. You know what I mean? And that's not. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you kind of need like another. Account. I think you need another eBay account for a few different reasons. Maybe you want to sell something that's not quite. It's legal by eBay standards, but maybe it doesn't fit in with your other product. Right. You know, so I'm going to start up another account. Tennessee Picker says he got burned doing that with single baseball cards. What's he saying? Shipping them in envelopes with no uh, tracking. Oh, oh, on, on like his main account. Mm -hmm. Bearded Picker says strippers need Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> they're not strippers they're models or whatever and, and most of them are probably like uh 60 years old now in those kind of those kind of magazines so <laughs> but i'm just saying like i need to i do need to start another account for a few reasons um you know and i don't know if i'm going to attach to the same paypal account or not but um i'm definitely going to give it a shot because there, there's some items that i've wanted to sell before but 
whenever you start at a base price for shipping on first class package of what's the lowest now? Is it two sixty six? Yeah, that's kind of high. Yeah, if you want to sell stuff that's like, like maybe you want to like make a multi listing of stuff that's like five dollars. That's like half of the damn purchase price is going to be shipping, you know. So we shall see. Oh, Nevermore Antique says it's worked out great for him. Hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't think you'd want to send anything, you know, super valuable since there is no tracking. Uh, I found this book last weekend and it's just been sitting around my warehouse. Um, I wanted to show you this. It's on the, there's a couple things. First thing, can you see these statues? It's a pig. That's the flying pig, huh? That's the flying pig, yeah. So they're around Cincinnati. There's, I told we talked about this in the video last week. There's um, a lot of those like flying pigs. There's probably like a hundred of them just scattered all throughout the city. Um, but so I thought this was just a cool book with photos and everything. And I'm flipping through it just the other day, looking at it. And lo and behold, it's got a Johnny Bench autograph inside. Oh, cool. Yeah. Is that what's that worth? Nowadays, he's charging like 80 or 90 dollars to sign. At the so time, you, I'm guessing it was free because inside is purchase for signing by Johnny Bench. Two copies. So that's not an authentic authentication, but that's probably enough, right? Wouldn't yeah, you think? I think so. I'm just I'm gonna keep it. I think it's a cool book, and then that just adds to the the cool factor of it. But yeah, I only paid two bucks for it. So that's what you need is like guys that you need a baseball player that's really good and really reserved, like doesn't like the fans while he's playing. So you go straight to the locker room after the games and then you need him to die real young. What so, what so he's not around to sign autographs. You know what I mean? So then if you do find an autograph, it's worth a lot. Like, um, like Chad with the Selena autograph, the reason that autograph is worth a lot of money is because she died young. Mm -hmm. So that's what you need that we're looking for. Oh, and Kathleen Riggs made a, uh, a comment up here about, I've had a friggin' Bible listed for three months now that is never, never sold. Bible buyers only like Lonnie. I'll tell you what, I've got some Bibles that are listed that haven't sold too, Kathleen, but I've got like, I have a lot of Bibles listed. Like, I might sell one Bible a week. I think I've sold one Bible this week out of 20 something. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a numbers game, just like everything else yeah. we do. And um, after you do a few Bibles or a bunch of Bibles, actually, you start to kind of figure out what people actually buy. <laughs> Cause for a while I was buying every Bible I came across that I could get for real cheap and I would list it. And then I'm like, Oh, they're not buying this kind of Bible, but this Bible seems that's how I learn. This Bible seems to sell better and it has these characteristics. And then I start focusing on trying to buy those and I start narrowing focus. So um, yeah, all Bibles don't necessarily sell and they don't I, sell fast. I got a free Bible today. It was from the forties and uh, it, she just marked free on it. And I was like, I'm going to take your Bible. Thank you. And she said, Oh, you're welcome. I just couldn't see making any money from selling it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I said, I can't. Uh, Thanks. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah, that's one of those things, huh? Jory saying uh, pre 1920s leather bound Bibles. Kathleen is saying, How about doing a video on Bibles? I would, Kathleen, but to be honest, my expertise on Bibles has been uh, a little bit uh, overblown and exaggerated. So I'm kind of trying to keep the Bibles. Eh. <laughs> I don't really know Bibles. I just sold some on eBay. That's it. I'm going to look and see if the YouTube channel Bible Flips is taken. You could have a name change. This could be all Bibles. Bible Flips. That would be, that would be interesting. And then maybe... Maybe I could put, you know how you can do like the charity stuff on eBay? 
you could put them all on like add the charity thing to all the Bible listings. So then whenever you take those free Bibles, you don't feel so bad. <laughs> yeah. Not that you, you don't look like you feel that bad though about that. Anyway. I don't feel that bad. Nevermore Antique says I am a devout Christian and I sell Bibles. Well, I mean, think about it. The door to door Bible salesmen, I mean, they were, you know, they would quote scripture and they were quote unquote Christians, weren't they? Yeah, and, and why would it be a bad thing for someone to, uh, like, I, most of the religions I know of like to spread the word. So if we're helping spread the word. Uh, Lonnie, the Bible flipper, I'm that is, like, I guess I talked about it too much because now I'm, like, the Bible guy, and it's not true. It's, I'm not any guy. Like, I sell a lot, a lot. Of, I sell, I, me and John sell everything. I'm not an expert on anything at all. Rod at Win by Doing said, I still picture Big John Teague. <laughs> oh, yeah. Brother, where are <laughs> start talking Bibles. <laughs> what a great movie. Do we know of anyone in our group that can authenticate high-end watches? I don't. Not me. I don't. That would be a good thing to get into, though. I know that Lauren can do like high end uh, clothing and purses and stuff like that, but I don't know anybody that does the watches. Make a post though in the uh, in the Facebook group. You never know; there might be somebody in there that's been lurking. Yep, uh, David uh, McMillan, Lauren. the card boot picker, just in the super chat. Thanks, man. And I like your new name, by the way, the card boot picker. That's cool. I've watched uh, I've watched a couple of man. I was, you know how you know you're up too late. If if you see him stream his car boot uh, yeah. sale, yeah, it's the I opposite was, for me though because I caught one when I woke up one time. <laughs> Tennessee pig, that's so funny. He said, "I can authenticate a good cheeseburger." <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh God. <laughs> Rod saying, yeah, I definitely wouldn't think there's a market for Gideon Bibles. Yeah, that's a good point. There's not. For the, uh, that's the hotel Bibles. Yeah. Yeah, anything that there's going to be a lot, that, you know, readily available is not going to have much value. I did sell a uh, study Bible a week or two ago. Or wait, did I sell it yet? Yeah, I think I did. I think I sold it for like 25 or 30 bucks. Yeah, you sent me a picture of it when you picked it up, and I said, that's a good one. Yeah. You, you, know, you, sold it. you know best. Well, no, I don't know best. Actually, you know what? If you want to talk to someone about Bibles, uh, Nevermore Antiques is in the chat, and he has a YouTube channel also. Um, that's your man for Bibles, because he actually has a Bible collection, and he sells Bibles. So there's, if there's an expert, that's the one. All right, man, I've only got one more thing to share here. Okay, it's 255, so that works out. I thought this was hilarious. Uh, this ninja-like cat ruined its owner's eBay advert. I think they were meaning like sale posting, basically. This is an Irish thing. Um, uh, when Sophie Robinson posted a photo of a dress she was selling, she thought she had got everything right, including a little white lie. Um, it told buyers the dress worn for two hours was from a smoke and pet-free home. Then five days after posting it, she noticed her cat Mitzi's paw. Can you see the little paw on the dress? Oh, yeah, I see it. <laughs> I, you probably have to deal with this. That's your house, don't you? With cat bonds. Not, not anymore. Because I no. don't have any cats. I don't have any cats in the shack. So the, it's a cat free shack. So far. Lauren wants me to get some shed kitties. <laughs> she needs to get some shed kitties. Oh man. I saw a stray grocery cart today on the side of the road and thought about bubbles. <laughs> right. I need to finish watching that series. I haven't watched them all yet. Funny stuff. So that is it, man. Um, I guess we'll, um, I guess we'll put a post up in the, this week in reselling Facebook group about the yard sale. Uh, if anybody is interested in, you know, meeting us out there, if not, that's cool too. We're going to have a blast. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. Make How sure much you bring money? In, make sure, a lot. I was getting ready to ask you that. Make sure you bring enough. I don't want to, you know, halfway through the day, you're like, I got to go to the ATM. 
Oh, I thought you were about to say I don't. You don't want me to like hey John, can I borrow a hundred dollars? No, which I wouldn't do. But I'm gonna bring. I'm. I think I'll have at least a thousand with me for the for the buying. You hear that, guys? Jump Lonnie. He's gonna have a thousand bucks cash on him. If I'm t- if I'm talking about a thousand, John's gonna probably have at least two k on him. I would imagine. Well, there's the other thing too, though, is like my van only has so much space. You know what I mean? Like, can I fit two thousand dollars worth of stuff in my van? Not if you're buying like fifty dollar dressers and stuff, right? Yeah. See, that's the thing. I don't know if I want to mess with furniture or not. I'm gonna have to you know, strategize this. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna bring. Uh, Candace and I were talking about that. I'm gonna bring a bunch of like boxes. Not priority boxes, but boxes like in FedEx, and you know, bring them in flat, and then as I buy stuff, that's how I'm going to store it in the van, and we're going to pull all the seats out except for the front seats, obviously, and then uh, we'll keep the stuff in that in there, and then if I do get overloaded, I'll FedEx that crap back home. That's smart. Buying. That is smart. It's, it's not that expensive from there, mm-hmm. you know. So. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to it, man. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. It's almost here, too. I mean, it's like a month away. Yep. Uh, Ziploc bags, Lonnie. Wait, wait, what is Swamp doing with Ziploc bags? Who knows what Swamp's up to, man? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not storing all the garage sale stuff in Ziploc bags. You can fit two thousand dollars worth of Beanie Babies. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, Swamp landfill, said break boxes. I think a landfill of Beanie Babies wouldn't be worth two thousand dollars. Oh, for the sale smalls. Okay, yeah, gotcha. All right, yeah. There's going to be a lot of smalls. That's what I'm going to be uh, focused on. And I don't even know how good this yard sale thing is going to be. You know, the best part of the trip might be the uh, eating and drinking and hanging out. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> you never know. Probably. Oh, you know where we're staying? Um, you're coming Friday. You're going to show up Friday, right? Um, yes, I'm coming Friday afternoon. Okay, we're going to get there Thursday, and we're we're going to stay in a Hobbit hole on on the night before. Mm-hmm. We're staying in it's it's a Hobbit hole. It goes underground, and then the the roof is like grass and stuff. Mm-hmm. The door is round. It's got this whole theme to it. It's cool. It's a hobbit hole. Is that it. uh is that on Airbnb? Yeah. Is this your first Airbnb stay? Uh yeah. we've stayed in like some condos and stuff before. We rented a cabin in Gatlinburg one time. I don't know if it was Air I don't think it was Airbnb. So I think this might be. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, it's it's cool. The whole idea is they're supposed to supply, you know, breakfast. Ah, okay. Yeah, it said in the it said in the advertisement that we could like hang out with them or stuff or something like that. So they or, live there, yeah. Sometimes they'll just rent the house and they they don't stay there, but other times people are there, yeah. It's kind of odd. It says it's on a farm, and then they also offer to sell uh, fresh beef from their farm. Awesome, like grass fed. Yeah. That's like, cool, man. You uh, should do a lot of vlogging at that place. I'm already intrigued. <laughs> it sound, you know what? It almost sounds like. It sounds like Dwight, Dwight Schrute's. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Beet farm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Remember, um, you had the bed and breakfast on there, right? Do you know why it's called Airbnb? I have no clue. So the guy that started it was like in his 20s. And there was a convention in town of like dentists or something. I'm probably screwing the story up. And all the hotels were booked and he was hard up for cash and he couldn't make rent. So he put an advertisement out that he had air beds. Oh. He's like, hey, you can sleep in my house. I got an air bed and I'll serve you breakfast and charge them like, you know, 20 bucks a head or something cheap like that. So air bed and breakfast. Okay. And now, of course, it's, man, the prices are really good though. For what you get versus prices are good and it's a really good platform. We've used it like a ton. Uh, because you can like review the person that you stay with, they can review you before you even agree to stay. Like you can see what all the reviews are. Um, you know, make sure you're not staying with some creep or anything. But we've had nothing but awesome experiences with it. 
Cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to be doing a lot of vlogging. I'm going to use my new uh, new GoPro, new to me GoPro, out on the uh, trail and at the uh, Hobbit Hole. So, Hobbit Hole. Sounds kind of... Mm. Is that even how they advertise it, Hobbit Hole? Yeah. Take some pictures of that ad. I want to see this thing. Okay, we will do. Or screenshots or whatever. All right, guys, that's all we got. Thank you for watching. Uh, six pack show is on Lauren's channel this week. Hot chic thrift Sunday, eight o'clock Eastern. Yep. See y'all there. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.